So now I'm going to show you how to make sure you can link up your student data with your master gradebook. Um, so main thing is make sure that your template of how you want your gradebook all laid out is perfect. It's exactly how you want it, because um, otherwise you've got to go through manually change it on every single student's once you're all done with it. So make sure you've got the text wrapping where you want it to be, you've got the formatting however you really like it to be, your colors, your, everything says the right trimester, doesn't have the old dates, whatever it is. So once you're sure it's all set, your template is ready to go. And then in your, on my master gradebook spreadsheet, I made a new page called Autocrat. So in this one, I have just the data that's going to be shared out onto the student sheets. So some of these columns are smaller just because I'm hiding the student name. So I've got username, what class they're in, their first name, last name, their name all together, and then their row. So I want to keep track of what row the student's data is in. So Alex, this is on row number three. So if I... So how do I make sure I go through and number them all? Well, I could just go through in three, four, five, type them all in. If I just do three, it's going to just copy threes all the way down. So what I can do instead is type three and then four right below it. Highlight those two and then select that little blue box, that plus sign. You drag it all the way down and it will indeed count all the way up for you. Save yourself some time. I tend to always do a handful of students extra in case we get someone new that I've already made the blank spreadsheets to begin with, and then a new student shows up, all I've got to do is change the name to make sure it matches, um, that are assigned, then this one that already exists to that student. All right, so once I've got this set up, this is the data I need. I need their name, I need what class they're in, and what row their data is in. From there, I use Autocrat. So this will be a quick tutorial with Autocrat. So I'm saying launch. Do, 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 do. All right, and I labeled the whole tab autocrat so that way I know this is the sheet that got shared, all the data got shared out. So let's take a moment. Watching, loading, ah, no merge job. So autocrat has updated, so if you haven't used it recently, it has changed. Um, that's why I wanna go through this, come on. Try three, give it whatever name you want to, doesn't really matter. You know, probably have to type it in again. Choose your template, so mine was Science, progress monitoring, trimester three, usually one of the ones that you've edited most recently, last modified is up at the top. And I also make sure to always call anything that's going to be a template, template. I put that in the title so that way I know that this is a document set up as a template. Wait for it to load. Sorry, this video may be a lot of waiting, so feel free to zip ahead. So next. All right, so merge tab. Make sure that you are merging. Okay, I want autocrat. And then it goes, oh, you wanted the autocrat tab. Okay. Um, one thing I guess also to notice is that I only have one row um, frozen up at the top because Autocrat doesn't know how to handle two rows frozen. So class is going to match with class. So I go through match with full name, matches with full name. So I'm rows, matches with rows. Oh, and that's all the tags I have. Um, you can have more columns than that. Sometimes it's just useful, but those are the only tags I had on my student sheet. There was class, full name, and rows. Everything else is filled in. So I say next. File name. This is where you do have to think a little bit, decide how do you want to name the files. So I like to put, so I want to call it sort of by class name. So how do I tell it class? It has this whole like, tell Autocrat, use tags. What? So this took me a long time to find. Over here on the side, there's this whole blue section here. If you click on that, oh, here's the tags you can use. So I want class. Click on it. It copied it to the clipboard, and now you say Control v paste and it's right there. Is that very clear to find? No, not at all, but that's how they've set it up right now. All right, so I've got class, and then I want to use, let's call it trimester three progress monitoring. So that's, I call this document progress monitoring. Um, that's what I'm kind of, that's the name for the students. Whatever you want to call it is fine with me, or is whatever makes most sense to you. Actually, I do this way. I try three, and then I put a gap, and then I want to have the student name show up in the title. So that way, and this is very important when you're creating autocrat files, you want to make sure you know whose file all these are. So same thing, I want to go to full name was the tag I wanted, and then I'll paste it, control V. So now it's going to fill in with class. So I know that what class they're in, I can sort it by that. Progress morning trimester three, and then their full name. So the title, do think about it before you create it, just because that's what you're going to have a whole folder full of all these files. Um, it's a Google document. That's going to be the kind of document you want. Um, trimester three. All right, so now next, choose the folder. Where do you want it to go? So choose folder. 
And over here, just very quickly, I made a little folder called Try3. That's where I want to stick it. You can put it wherever you want to. You can organize it. You can figure it out. But I just made a folder called Try3, which is where I want to stick all of these. I do recommend sorting them. Otherwise, they all end up in your drive and get very messy. All right. And you can change the name of the folder later. Next. You can dynamic. I haven't had much luck with this, but you can use it or skip over it. Set merge condition. I always do this as long as the username is not null, meaning if it's not blank, please make a document. If it is blank, do. Except in this case, I do want to make the documents for these students who are blank. So instead of using the username not null, I want to say rows not null. So whenever rows, so it's going to make a document for number 63, but not for number 64, because there is no 64. Next, do I want to share the doc? Yes, save yourself a lot of time. Editable, I would recommend make it editable. You can decide these, allow them to share, reshare, sure, why not? Okay, so two, who do you send this to? Once again, oh, how do I get that tag? Over here on the side is blue bar. Username, make sure that was one of your fields. Paste it, control V, and it's very fussy. You have to give it a subject, so progress. You can do whatever you want to do. It's called banana if you want to. But this way, if you get random emails in your Gmail account, you'll know what they are. So next. All right. So you have to, if you want them to be shared, you have to be sure you put the username in here. If you had, if you had, a, you're co-teaching with somebody else, you could put the other teacher's name in there as well. So it would go to the other teacher as well, however you want to set it up. All right. Say next. Run it on trigger, not necessary. Okay. So now we say save. And it's going to think about it. Think about it. Do, 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 do. And then once it's done, all right. So it is now, should be ready to go. I like to go to info and then it will load. So just to kind of confirm, I'm expecting it to do 62 rows of work. So let's see. So this is this looks different on this new version, but now it's adding new column headers. It's got merged things. So there's gonna do 61 different rows. Okay, this makes sense. Um, and this is gonna be the file name. And there's three tags. So if you want to preview it, you can, or if you know it's going to work, you can just go with it. But it will, it's got the subject. So everything's all set up now. So I'll just say, I don't, if you want to go back, and you can always go back and edit it too. So when you mouse over it, you get a little pencil to go back and edit the job, throw it away, or you can run it. So when you're all ready to go, click on run, and it will take a little while, but you'll start to see all of these rows filling in. And then when you open up that try three folder, you'll start to see those documents. So let Autocrat run 61 rows. It'll take a little while. And then the next video will show your next step, which is the one major tedious part that you have to do manually. But once you do it once, you are all done. And